So we're working on stoichiometry. In the first video, we sort of got some background knowledge about stoichiometry, the law of conservation of mass, uh, mole ratios was probably the real important takeaway from that. Now we're going to look at what I call the five super simple steps for successful stoichiometric solutions in science. And actually, once you learn the steps, it's easier to do the steps than it is to say five super simple steps for successful solutions. See, I can't even say it. These are the five super simple steps. Okay, five steps in stoichiometry. Number one, you got to read the question. And in the question, you need to determine what is my known and what is my unknown. What that means is the known is the one number that's given to you. Um, we have to give you one number to start with, otherwise you don't have a starting point. The unknown, you'll hear me, hear me refer to that all the time. That's the answer. What do I want my answer to be? What is the question asking me to find? Is it grams of hydrogen? Is it moles of water? Um, so that'll be my unknown. Second thing I need to do, and sometimes one and two will just go hand in hand, or they might flip-flop, um, but I've written it down as number two, is I need to write the balanced chemical equation. I can't do stoichiometry without a balanced chemical equation. So make sure you get that part down. Um, and then I need to convert grams of the known into moles. So whatever my known is from up here, whatever is given to me, if it's given to me in grams, all stoichiometry needs to be done in moles, so I need to convert it. Now I've put a squiggly here, because if in my question I already have it in moles, I don't have to do step number three. I can move right on to step number four. Step number four is calculate the unknown in moles. In other words, when I read my equation, I determined what is my unknown? What are they asking me to answer? Is it moles of water? Is it grams of hydrogen? When I do that, I need to calculate it doing or using dimensional analysis. analysis. And if you're having trouble with that, go back and see some of the earlier videos. Again, I think dimensional analysis is, is the most important takeaway from um, chemistry. I really do. Uh, besides the lab component of being able to do these things and, and getting your hands dirty and applying science. Then at the very end, if, if the question asks us for grams of hydrogen and we've been working in moles the whole time, we need to remember to do step number five, which means we need to take our moles and finally turn it into mass or into grams. Put a squiggly here on this one too, because sometimes our answer will just ask us to do it in moles, which means we don't have to do step number five. Let's look at an example. This is the reaction of potassium and water. So how many moles of hydrogen are produced when this should be? Just put point, tried to, 0, <laughs> 0 0.400 0 0 moles of potassium is used. So right here are potassium. Now, some people, they start to, this is a, a rather simple word equation or a word problem, but people shut down immediately because I, I, did, I don't even know where to start. That's what I hear most often. We go back, right back to the five super simple steps. We go to number one. We identify the known and the unknown. And what I'll try to do throughout these is keep track of the known in green and the unknown in red. So I'll be switching back and forth. So I determine my, my known. In here, that's the only thing that's given to me. That's the 0 0.400 moles of potassium. Again, that was just an error on my part. And then my unknown, keeping track of that in red, is how many moles of hydrogen. So in my equation, I need my um, answer in moles of hydrogen. I need to keep working until I get to moles of hydrogen. I go to step number two down here, and step number two tells me that I need to write a balanced chemical equation. If I look at the equation up here, it's already balanced. You can go ahead and check that if you want, but I can pretty well guarantee you that that is balanced. I look at number three, so I'm done with number two. Go to number three. Convert grams of known into moles. I go back to my known. That was the one I underlined in green. And it is not in grams. It's already in moles. I don't need to do number three. I go to number four. It says calculate the unknown 
in moles. This is where I do the dimensional analysis. This is where I find the answer to the problem. So I go back to um, my earlier work with dimensional analysis. And in dimensional analysis, I always have to write down what I know. It's my starting point. And what I know is that I have 0 0.400 moles of potassium. I want my answer way over here in moles of hydrogen. And remember, hydrogen is a diatomic, so it has to be H2. In order to do that, I need some conversion factor that gets rid of moles of potassium. So I put moles of potassium on the bottom because those two will cancel out if I do. I go back to my equation and I look, okay, can I turn moles of potassium into moles of hydrogen? And I remember my mole ratios? I can. I come back up here and I see that I have two moles of potassium. That's what this two is telling me right here. So I've got two moles of potassium. And I want to turn that into moles of hydrogen gas. I come over here, there's an implied one right there. So I can say one mole of hydrogen gas. And my ratio is for every two moles of potassium. Now I start canceling some things out. So I'll switch to this. That's going to cancel because it's on opposite sides of the line. I take 0 0.400 times 1 divided by 2 in my calculator, and I get 0 0.200 moles of hydrogen gas. This isn't so hard, right?